Welcome champions to the next overview and tier list ranking featuring the newest champion. This is where we'll break down his mechanics and place him in my overall tier list for every champion in the game. So let's talk about War Duke, the chaotic evil human fighter, and the one of two champions in the entire game with the role of DPS slash tank, the other being Arkin. This is a unique combination, because most tanks offer some form of support to your formation. The only reason you'll be using War Duke is if you are focusing on him as your damage dealer. Whether you will also be using him as a tank or not entirely depends on how you choose to use him. As a DPS, he finds multiple ways to scale up his damage. We're going to go from easiest to understand and work our way to the harder to understand, because one of his formation abilities is quite convoluted. Let's start with a trained killer, where each time War Duke either attacks or sustains damage, he will gain a remorseless stack. Each stack will increase his damage by a lower amount, stacking additively, up to a pretty standard buff. There is not a cap to how many times this can stack up, but you will lose all stacks when moving to a new area. As long as you aren't dying quick or have some decent crowd control, you can build this up pretty high. But that's why it's an additive stack. Anytime we're talking additive, abilities will always taper off really hard at a certain point. Now, let's bounce over to his specialization choice, which is between three options that highlight War Duke's favorite aspects in life. First, Chaos. Increasing his damage by 100% for every slotted Chaotic Champion. Second, Money. Increasing his damage by 300% for every slotted Goldfine Champion. Or lastly, Evil, increasing his damage by 500% for every slotted Evil Champion. No matter what you choose, this is a multiplicative stack, and has a gear slot and a feat tied to it, to scale it up. So pick which among them gives you the best damage returns based on who you have slotted. You might think, eh, I'll just slot all Evil Champions and get the 500% on all of them, right? Well, not so much. War Duke requires positional formation abilities to really scale up his damage. And there are a finite amount of evil positional formation ability supports. But why does he need positionals? Because of his next formation ability, Drawn to Power, where his damage is increased for each positional formation ability affecting him. Stacking multiplicatively, buffs to this will be applied to the pre-stack, and that's very important. You might think pre-stack, post-stack, what's the difference? Let me break it down with a very simple concept example. Let's say we have 5 times 5 times 5, which equals 125. We have a 2 times multiplier to work with. If we apply that to the post, that means we take that 125 with our times 2 for a total of 250. But if we apply that to the pre, that means all of those 5s are getting that times 2. So now we're talking 10 times 10 times 10, which equals 1,000. So increasing the pre-stack ends up with a much larger number in contrast to increasing the post-stack. So in regards to War Duke's Drawn to Power, that means we absolutely want as many positional formation abilities affecting him as possible. And the equipment and feats affecting this ability will scale incredibly well. Another champion who does this, and is the reason they are so good, is Krond with Survival of the Fittest. His ultimate ignites his sword in flames for 30 seconds, for which he deals 1000% more damage with his normal attacks, and takes 50% less damage from all sources for the duration. If you reapply his ult, it just refreshes the duration, there is no way to overlap the buff. And now you're thinking, alright, no sweat. I'll just throw in a bunch of positional buffers and get rolling. And <laughs> not so fast, Buckaroo. You see, War Duke is what I like to scientifically refer to as a stinker. He also gets Chaotic Inversion, which reads, Most positional formation ability targets are inverted. Meaning he throws a wrench into just about everyone's abilities. Now, the wording can be a little confusing, to be honest. You have to think of it as a true inversion, not a reversal. Essentially, it goes everywhere other than where it's supposed to. Let's use Celeste as an example. She has two positional buffs. One that increases the damage of champions who are adjacent to her, and one that heals those in the column in front of her. The adjacency is simple enough. It just becomes a buff that increases the damage of those non-adjacent. 
the heal is what might be a little more confusing, as it now heals everyone simply not in the column in front of her. In the same way, those who are non-adjacent buffers, like Makos, become adjacent buffers. But then you have someone like Wild Shape Tyrrell, where Wild Shape's buff is those within two slots. So it's everything but, meaning he can't be within one or two slots of Warduke for him to receive it, a minimum of three plus slots away. One positional type that becomes a bit of a toughie is champions like Cadibri, Mahen, and Vlanya, who buff everyone in front of them. This means it becomes those in the same column or behind, but they can't exactly be tanking up front with Warduke, and if he is tanking, he's in the front, so he'll never be behind them. This is where Valentine comes in handy, to make sure she is in the line of receiving any buff Warduke might be missing out on with these shenanigans of his. For those who don't remember or are unfamiliar, Valentine will share any positional buff she is receiving to all DPS champions. And if that DPS champion already is receiving the buff, she will instead increase its effectiveness. While she doesn't herself offer a positional buff, this is mechanically enough to make her useful. Then you have conundrums like Nova, who we've talked about double dipping with the crew. It is positional, but in this case it simply doesn't change. You'd think, hey, two slots and three slots, we'll just put her four slots away. But no, no, no. Regardless of which of her specializations you take, it just is what it is. For some reason, his inversion simply doesn't affect it. So you still want to use Valentine with her first specialization and have Warduke either two to three slots away and Valentine in the opposite of which Warduke is for him to double dip. So now you have to consider his specialization choices and what will be the best positional buffers to pair with them. Well, let's go over that. Now, I'm not going to mention every single champion that could work here, but those who, in my opinion, will at least be potentially worth using. Also, I'll be rapid-firing off names a little bit, so if you're unfamiliar with all of the champions of the game, stay sharp. And remember, if you want to hear a breakdown for them, I've covered every champion in this game in my past videos. So, positional buffers who perform well that are either chaotic, gold, or evil. In C1, we have Kathris and Urkira, who are chaotic, and Veronica, who is both chaotic and evil. Nerds is an honorable shoutout as chaotic and multiple positional buffs. But as we should know by now, they are baby buffs, and likely won't be able to compete unless you've invested in legendaries for Artie or something. C2, we have Regis, Donner, and Whittle as chaotic, as well as Korth and Blushi, who are evil. C3 we have Omen and Mahen as gold and Spurt as evil. C4 we have Desmond as chaotic who offers two positional formation abilities. Paulton as gold and chaotic. And Baloth as a star with two positional formation abilities and counting for all three as chaotic, evil, and gold. C5 has Calliope who offers two positional abilities and Briv for chaotic. As well as Quillic and Valentine for gold. Seed 6 has Shandy as Chaotic, who offers two positional buffs. Seed 7 has Cadibri as Chaotic, Freely and Gazric as Gold, and Egbert as both Chaotic and Gold. With Freely, remember his support comes from a debuff, which is not positional. But he does have a positional ability that can be used as Warduke just requires positional abilities to scale his damage. He doesn't require numerical buffs from those positionals, as he doesn't scale them. Though if you are pairing him with Valentine, it is more ideal to have the raw buffing positionals. Seat 8 is irrelevant, as it's where War Duke rests his rump. Seat 9 has more gain, as both chaotic and gold, and Makos as both gold and evil. Seat 10 has Havilar as chaotic, and Eliwick as chaotic and gold. Seat 11 has Nova as chaotic, and Seat 12 has Dob as chaotic and gold. A lot of options to work with many of which work quite well. I haven't had quite as much time to test him as I'd like before doing this video, but so far one of my personal favorite formations is using the synergy between Desmond's Lament and the three deadies, Veronica, Spurt, and Blushi. While using Nova and Valentine's synergy and throwing in our newcomer Virgil because I find him quite fun. Throw in Makos because we're already leaning into the evil specialization. Anyway, I mentioned this briefly when I talked about Freely, but I want to stress it again. While Warduke does invert positional formation abilities and scales his damage off of them, he does not have a way he numerically changes them. 
It is not an aura of infamy like Black Viper, usurp like Arkan, or observance from Artemis. It's just scaling his damage based on how many he's receiving. So, it's his event. Who's here with him? We've got Lucius, who many are probably familiar with coming off last season with the Heroes of Erois. If you happen to attach yourself to him during that time, now is a great time to finish off getting epics for him, as this is the last year he will be present for the event. But if you're sick of him or dropping him because those seasonal buffs are gone, you also have your vent as an option. While you should do your best to full epic everyone, I would not recommend gearing up Yorvin past that. He has very few uses in the grand scheme of things, and when he does, his gear doesn't really matter. Those uses are tied to his defensive component of Danger Sense and his Bud Damage ult choice, neither of which scale with gear. The only reason you'd focus him is if you for some reason love him and use him as a DPS, or if you use him as a dedicated debuffer for a debuff team. But even then, his scaling isn't great. Ultimately, I would recommend Warduke over the other options. He has some decent scaling, and while complicated to tinker with in a formation, is satisfying at the same time. And something you'll learn from me, I'm always a fan of the evil motif of champions. So what about his variance and achievement? In my opinion, these are all fairly simple, and all serve a decent purpose in learning his kit. First of all, his achievement is rather simple. You need him to have 9 positional, formation abilities on him when he is in the front column. This can be completed with just the core champions, as long as you've unlocked some favor bonuses, as some count for being positional, like kill him for his edge of your seat and fall back. Then we use Bruner, Celeste, Naeli, Calliope, Makos, and Tyrell, and we have more than enough to bang it out. Now in all of his variants, he cannot be moved or removed, so you're going to be stuck using him, likely as your DPS, and working with his inversion. In the first, Warduke simply attacks one second faster, and everyone else attacks three seconds slower. This is technically a buff, as you're probably using him as your DPS anyway. Since you're not only having your DPS attack faster, this will also scale up his A Trained Killer much quicker. With the second, you can only use evil, chaotic, or gold tagged champions to symbolize his specialization choice. This includes a lot of champions, but also a lot of core are locked here, so don't forget to farm up some favor before tackling this one if your roster is lacking. His third is, in my opinion, not really more difficult than the second, as you are limited to only champions with a positional formation ability, in addition to the unmovable War Duke. You will have a fair amount of options with Corrin Evergreen, as I went over with his achievement. So where does he fall in my overall tier list? He's got some pretty good scaling compared to other DPS out there, but how's his availability? He can get into three of the four patrons, but one of them will require a feat, and he's locked out of two day one trials of Mount Tiamat restrictions, Dex 12 and Int 10. There's worse out there, but he's definitely not the greatest there. I think in terms of being a DPS, he's actually pretty close to his tank slash DPS counterpart, Arkin, but likely a bit better scaling. So let's put him into a B plus, but not quite reaching the heights of A minus. Stay tuned because I'm always working on the next one, but I uh, pushed a little harder than I usually can, so this didn't come out too far after his release and was still early during his event. Even though I suffer from insomnia, I'm more sleep deprived than I normally am. Either way. I'm glad you chose to spend your time here. Please hit the like, sub, and bell. And remember, have a hell of a time out there, champion. Note that Dragon's Bait... Dragon's Bait? Note that Dragon Bait's pers... Oh my god. <laughs>